Welcome back to Quasi Ball TV. Thank you so much for coming back again. Welcome to LFC Vibes. Today, we're just going to talk and discuss anything LFC. Please share, subscribe, like, and comment. If you agree or disagree, don't forget to click that notification bell for notification purposes. We appreciate you all. Let's get this ball rolling. As I said, we're going to discuss anything LFC right now now lfc land or lfc kingdom is very boring right now so i'm just gonna blah blah around and talk about a few things that i feel like needs to happen let's start with the message and the future of Liverpool. so that means i'm about to get on the owners right now either john w henry or his partner venner needs to come out and tell liverpool fans and stakeholders where liverpool are going because right now liverpool is in shambles looking from the outside but if you're looking from our bank account it looks like we're making a lot of money because you know a couple of days ago the deloitte um, ranking came out and liverpool came up third right right behind uh, Real Madrid. For the first time in, since this ranking started, Liverpool has beaten Manchester United, which is not a small feat at all, especially beating Barcelona and Bayern. So that means Liverpool have done well. And all this came from last year's you know, season of us playing 63 to 64 games. So that means the club generated a lot of revenue. TV views or contracts with Nike, like everything that we did based on that season brought in, what, 550 million pounds, 700 million dollars, depending on what your currency you want to look at. But of course, you know, I think in two months, they're going to bring the operating cost of Liverpool from last year. So with subtracting our operating cost from last year to the revenue, whatever is left, that's the profit that Liverpool has made. Of course, the Liverpool fan, when they saw that number, they were like, wow, why are we not buying players? Why are we not buying a midfielder? Well, all this, that. It doesn't work like that. But I'm not going to sit here and teach your account. The idea that is frustrating for anybody who don't care that whether you're FA FSG out, FSG in, you in the middle, or you just people like me who just care about the club being run properly. I think we all are frustrated, one, because what's going on the field is not working, it's not going on well. Two, we know that a club is going to be sold. But the most important between those two is, which I think comes to the three is, what is the message? What is the future plan? Yes, we know Werner has come out at business as usual, but business as usual right now is not looking good for Liverpool. A lot of the fans, like, how is it at Anfield? People are playing. Chelsea is in Anfield. The fans are still quiet. It's not that they're frustrated. It's not that they don't believe in it. It's just that they don't know what to do because LFC is not playing well, which is my first number one point. You know, what's going on on the pitch is not transferring to the fans. The fans are not seeing anything for them to believe. And a lot of times, yes, you need the fans to pick up the players. But the thing is, we've been watching these guys week in, week out, uh, cup competition to league cup, and it, I mean, to league cup to league competition, and we don't see any progress. We hear club comes in and tell us all this, oh, we're working hard, we're getting there, we're getting there. And it's different to, for the fans to see the progress, but we don't see any progress. Yes, we beat um, Wolves. And yes, in the past two matches, we haven't considered a goal, which is, you know, progress. But the style of play, the way we play, the personnel on the field does not give the fans any build of confidence. So everybody is kind of like, I'm not sure. It's like the doubt is still creeping back in something that club work really hard to get out of the fans and make everybody believe so i think the owners need to come out and give us a message and say okay this is what we're doing we have told you we're looking for investment we have told you if a full sale comes along and there's the number that we like we will look at it we are talking to a few people we don't have to mention them. just say we you know liverpool is a big club it's a global club so there's a lot of uh, opportunity out there for people to get it. A club like Liverpool does not come out along all the time. So this is a great opportunity for a lot of investors to jump in. Come out and tell the fans that at least people will be like, okay, we know where you're going now. Yes, you have told them you want to sell or get investment. But that does not give the common fan or the hardcore fan any vote of confidence because we haven't heard anything since. The owners need to come out and give us a clear and precise message, which 
which tell us where the club is going. Yes, things are not doing well right now. Yes, we didn't spend money on in January. This is where we're going. At least let people know where we're going because right now the club is in shambles. Club is talking and nobody's listening because anything he says, everybody knows that he says A and then B comes up. And right now, everybody just wants club, uh, club to focus on coach. We are tired of him or we are tired of hearing whether it's true or not that he's making way too much decisions when it comes to players. When we he's been asked to purchase a player, he tells them no. When they, he's been asked, hey, these players are here too long, he says, no, don't talk about players moving out because I want them to make the decision if they want to stay or go, which is not how a club is supposed to move. And that is very frustrating for a lot of people. There's so many messages coming out and some of them you could say is made up, but a lot of them starts to make sense when you put two and two together. So so I think the owners need to come out and Gada Henry or Vena needs to come out and say, okay, the last time we gave you guys information, we're going to update you every month. We're going to update you every week, whatever it is. Tell the fans, let the fans be assured what's going on. Because right now, the way things are going, everybody feels like we are in trouble. For some of us who knows more information about what's going on. Even us, we are frustrated because we are like, okay, there's not a precise information. Sometimes they want to sell. Sometimes they just want investment. Sometimes all that. Yes, some of them is just uh, journals trying to make some money off their press. But owners needs to come out and have either is Verna or Henry or Michael Gordon or whoever needs to come out and just say, hey, from the last time we talked to you guys, this is what has happened. This is what we're looking at. You don't have to tell us who's in, interested in Liverpool. You just have to give fans what is going on. At least just crack the window a little bit. Let us see what is happening so that everybody could calm down. And that will build confidence back in the fans at Enfield because the reason why a lot of people enjoy Enfield is what the fans does at Enfield. Enfield is not always by the players. Enfield is between the players and the fans. And if one of them is broken, everything is broken. So I believe that the owners, I'm going to say it again, the owners need to come out and give us a precise and clear messaging on where we're going. Number two. So I think club needs to start playing for the players at the position where they are more comfortable. If somebody who's old and who has been there from day one is not playing well, Bash that person, let that person take a break, let them realize that you are not the number one anymore, and let somebody else play. When we played Chelsea, it was a horrible game. Boring, there's no plan to what we were doing. But one thing that I liked was our midfield had a lot of energy. That helped the defense. If club had played the usual midfield, we would have been in trouble in defense. Yes, Chelsea created a few chances. Our center backs did very well. Everything that Chelsea did, our center backs was able because they didn't have to always press high. And this pressing high is also very frustrating knowing that we're always going to get hit in a counterattack when you have Milner playing on that side. But one thing that I would say is I like him sticking to his plan sticking to his word and said, I will reward those players who played against Wolf, who played well, play against Chelsea. But one thing that I didn't like is Salah coming in and Salah was very poor. I would have rewarded Ilya to play on the right side and at least give him a chance to see what he can do. You know, I would have started Nunes. Yes, he just came out from injury, but we needed... We need to get him back. He needs to play as much, much game as possible for him to get his goal scoring prowess back. So I would have even played 4 2 3 1 to get Cavallo in there. Cavallo plays okay. I mean, he was okay against Wolves, but Klopp needs to, he needs to be clear on what his message is and what his first 11. If you don't have your first 11, that's fine. Start telling Salah, you've not been playing well for over 12 months, so I'm going to give you a break. You're not my first number one pick anymore. From now on, you and Elliot is going to be fighting for that position. Ox should not be playing on the wing. Ox should be playing in the midfield. So that is my um, spell on the whole club thing. I think he needs to be playing players in the play positions that they are comfortable. I don't like that you put him Elliot in the middle on the left side. He was absent the whole time. Yes, once in a while when he drifts to the left wing, he does something. But he is more comfortable on the right. He should have started on the right. I don't care. Salah should have come off the bench. And he needs to realize that, bro, you're not doing well in you. If that's going to keep going, then we will have to sub you. Kudos to the, the midfielders. And I give kudos to the defenders because they held their own. The attackers were just... 
out of useless. Let's talk about transfers. I guess there's no transfers to really talk about. People are talking about Mount and Jude Bellingham. It's the same thing over and over. Just copy and paste and copy and paste, copy and paste and repeat. It keeps going over and over. Liverpool club said himself, we are not buying anybody. The window closes in seven days. Actually, six, six days, depending on where you are right now. If club do not buy a midfielder, we're going to be in trouble towards the last six months of this stretch or the last five months of this. Going against Madrid and you're going to be competing in the Champions League. Right now, it seems to me he wants to put all his basket into the Champions League. If you get eliminated, you are in trouble because by the time you play the second match, it's halfway through the final part of the season. It's going to be in March. So whatever he think he's doing, it better work and he better stay consistent because right now, to me, sometimes club does things that it looks like he's not sure what he's doing. Uh, there was rumors of a few players here and there there, but I mean, Casado now we t <laughs> Brighton is talking about they want a hundred million. They don't want to sell. That's the thing. Brighton is trying to make it to Europe, you know, Europa at least, you know, see what they go from there. But they know they, you know, Chelsea tried again and they told them 100 mil. I don't think they want to sell. And that gives Liverpool a chance because now guess what? In the summer, a lot of pressure on club. You know, you've been talking about we're going to do this rebuild. We have to do this. We've been hearing you reading between the lines. You want money. If it happens in the summer, all you get is Jude Bellingham. The fans are going to lose their mind. Yes, we want Jude. But if he's the only one player, then you're going to be setting up for failure, just like you set up Nunes and Gakpo for failure. We can keep saying, oh, we got a lot of players injured. We got only three players that are important injured. Diaz, Jota, and VVD. That's it. None of them play midfield. And Bobby. I almost forget. But Bobby nowadays is coming off the bench. So that's what I'm saying. We can rely on those. Now we're hearing about Milner might get another contract. Keita's, I mean, I would want to keep Keita. We can pay him the same amount when you keep getting injured. Put put incentives into Keita's contract for him to be able to meet so that then he could make more money. None of this giving him a big contract and he could barely play. So if he wants uh, to stay, give him a... Uh, incentives other than that now he has to go ox got to go to me i said bobby has to go but it seems like they're trying to give him another contract the milner thing i think is just chatter there's a lot of players that has to go and liverpool needs to be able to be ruthless to let that happen so that's my spiel today just like i said in the beginning liverpool right now is boring so anything that i've said is boring to you don't blame me blame club and fsg and LFC because nothing exciting is coming from LFC and they need to look at that because the fans drive this club. If you guys keep thinking that, oh, we are the point where we are safe, that's how Manchester United th thought they were. Now look at them. They've been ahead of us for over 30 years and within 10 years L um, FSG have caught up. They're thinking that, oh, we're going to be okay. We're going to be okay. You don't have to worry and we're going to give us this lackluster moment and oh it's lfc is liverpool is no 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 it doesn't work like that there's too much money in the game and anybody at any time can surprise you newcastle is showing it arsenal is showing it so i'm just gonna leave it as that guys thank you so much please share subscribe like comment if you agree with all that nonsense i just feel notification bell crazy bull archie peace